Can PRP work on diffuse androgenetic alopecia? It has been 45 days since my PRP treatments began. I have had two sessions. However, I am still shedding. I just noticed my shedding has been cut in half by the treatment, but I still shed. My scalp just looks worse and more bald. Thank you for your question. You submitted a question with several photos. And you're asking your question, can PRP work for diffuse androgenetic alopecia? You state that you have had two sessions of PRP and that your hair is still shedding, although you note that the shedding has decreased by half. Well, I can certainly share with you my approach to treating androgenetic alopecia in women uh, in my practice, a little bit of background, I'm a board-certified cosmetic surgeon, fellowship-trained oculofacial plastic and reconstructive surgeon. I'm also the founder of Trichostem Hair Regeneration Centers, a system we developed using PRP, but also using a material called extracellular matrix. And we've, been, we've developed a system for both men and women who we treat around, from around the world uh, for mostly androgenetic alopecia. So I can share with you a little bit about the strategies that I use when I evaluate patients like yourself. So to begin with, it's important very much to distinguish androgenetic alopecia, which is the progressive thinning of hair, from something called telogen effluvium, which is hair shedding. Hair shedding that is often associated with an acute stressful event preceding, preceded by, let's say, two to five months where an event occurred. And it could be a, a major stressful event, such as general anesthesia or a family type of um, event. Um, and then two to five months later, there's a lot of shedding. Further, there's also a condition called chronic telogen effluvium. And this is a condition where a, a woman will, or it's typically more associated with women, that will have chronic hair shedding. Now that's important because when we see women who fall into the more classic category of androgenetic alopecia, we're looking at generally middle-aged women. And it's very common, you know, whether it's around age 50 or so, 50% 50 of women over the age of 50 have hair loss. That, that does leave a significant number, about 30%, under the age of 50. Further, in the work that we've been doing, and we started much of this work back in 2011, we've seen that a large number of younger women, women in their 20s and 30s, can also have androgenetic alopecia. And this, this is, as, as younger women came into our practice, I would often have to do, or feel compelled, to do biopsies to confirm the diagnosis of androgenetic alopecia to differentiate from other conditions that could be causing hair loss. In fact, our youngest patient we've treated, who's a woman, is 16, and she, has the same condition that her mother has of a very early onset androgenetic alopecia. So to answer the question about PRP, well, what we, what we developed in our practice evolved out of uh, an effort to help our hair transplant patients heal better. We wanted the donor area to heal better, and we wanted the hair grafts to survive better. And so we used a material called extracellular matrix uh, or acellular matrix, and we combined that with platelet-rich plasma. A side effect, a benefit that we saw was that thinning hair became thicker. Over the course of several years, I we, we took it upon ourselves to really work on systems to be able to more predictably treat people with hair loss, whether it's men or women. Further, at this point, I've developed a classification system for both men and women who come to our practice based on their gender, 
age, age of onset of hair loss, rate of progression, degree of progression, and if indicated, some other medical issues, as well as the possible need for confirmation of diagnosis with scalp biopsy. So when it comes to the management of a patient, a female pattern hair loss patient, using hair regeneration or trichostem hair regeneration, I generally tell our female patients that after one injection treatment, we can expect that on average that improvement will be seen at about nine months. Improvement being de defined by regrowth of hair that was not growing, and that is a classic part of androgenetic alopecia where the growth cycles are getting shorter. The, the antigen phase gets shorter and the resting phase, telogen phase, gets longer which means that at any given time, a certain percentage of hair is actually not growing. That's more than is typical when someone is not experiencing androgenetic alopecia. So regrowth of hair, strengthening of thinning hair, and essentially prolongation of the growth cycle such that there's more, ultimately, more hair on the scalp. And we can see that by looking at the hair part, and we can look at areas where there may be thinning, such as the temples. Now, a lot of times we see our patients improving sooner than that. We'll see them at three to six months and notice that the temple areas have started to fill in. And I always explain that if you see it there, then, you're going to, then it's affecting the entire scalp. Now, depending on the profile of the patient, we also to consider doing something called a booster injection. And that's generally done somewhere around 15 to 24 months after the first injection. But the sustainability of our treatment has exceeded for many patients five years. And so it depends on the patient profile and the, this continuous evolution of our treatment as we, treat, have we, as we have treated so many people in a wide range of ages and clinical, clinical profiles that I basically develop treatment plans that are specific to that patient's profile. I think it's important that you discuss with your doctor what the expectations will be. I think that at the current time, people are doing the best they can, and I, I am proud of the influence our, uh, our work has had on the world of hair loss treatment. We've gone from people uh, dismissing it and feeling that, uh, or, or, or perceiving that PRP and ACLU matrix was not really something that can work, to the point where lots of doctors are offering PRP and PRP with ACLU matrix in their own with their own approach. But I find that much of what I see is essentially a shotgun approach, and that people are seeing what they can, what kind of results they get. And currently, pay, a lot of our doctors, uh, other doctors are saying that PRP works 50% of the time. But that is pretty nonspecific, so we can't say 50% on exactly who, on what kind of profile, or is it just a broad average and kind of you have a 50% chance. I think that we, the work that we've done with with acellular matrix and PRP and following our patients closely and getting a certain amount of experience that comes from treating so many patients, it would come from a different perspective. So I think that the questions that I would ask is how certain are you with the diagnosis of androgenetic alopecia? I would say that also that one of the ways I distinguish androgenetic alopecia from telogen effluvium is based on the degree of hair shedding. Generally speaking, androgenetic alopecia is more of a slow, insidious process with minimal amount of significant hair shedding, while telogen effluvium is marked by significant hair shedding. Now that's just one point. Yes people who have androgenetic alopecia, their growth cycles get shorter, therefore there can be more 
hair being shed, and they'll say that they notice more hair in their brush, and they notice that compared to two to three years prior, they have significantly less hair. But it's always about the diagnosis before you, you start a treatment strategy. So be conf first confirm the diagnosis, discuss with your doctor what's the strategy with the PRP, what are the expectations, when, what kind of um, what kind of schedule will be necessary to sustain the the growth cycles? You know, the if if you have androgenetic alopecia, you have to understand also that this is a condition that's hardwired in your genetics, and everything we do is about management. So what you want is an optimal strategy for management of your hair loss. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.